everybody, and uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode here of the K2 Podcast. Uh, today is our 23rd episode, and uh, it's really, uh, really exciting. I didn't think we would actually get this far. It kind of continues to develop every week, um, and today we actually have a wonderful guest on for you. Uh, she's all the way from the Philippines. Uh, her name is Yana Tan, so everybody uh, welcome Yana Tan to the show, and uh, thanks for coming on. Yana, how are you? Thank you, Kevin, for having me. Um, the pleasure is mine. I'm good. Um, trying to keep my fitness and healthy lifestyle while you know we're all at home. So hopefully yeah. everything is also doing well right there. Absolutely. So why don't you uh, tell a little bit about like how has the coronavirus affected you guys over in the Philippines? Has it been pretty tough, or like what has it been like over there? Yeah, it's yeah, you said it, it's pretty tough, you know, especially I think for for active people, you know, people who have active lifestyle, sure. it's such a drastic change because, you know, you, you're really used to going outside, you have this busy life that, mm -hmm. you know, you seldom stay at home and then one day you're required to be locked at home. So right. the things that you used to do before, um, it's no longer happening, but, you know, there are more important things in life. So sure. we really have to, to really stay at home and, you know, follow all the rules and regulations and we just can't wait for all of this to be over mm -hmm. but um, related to that topic so that is actually the reason also why I started the the vlogs the YouTube channel that I just had you know three months ago during the peak of the quarantine here in the Philippines because mm -hmm. you know I just feel like for active people there has been a lot of demotivation going on when it comes to maintaining that active lifestyle because again the change is very drastic mm -hmm. um, the motivation really kicks in because you know you're just at home it's not that easy to you know to move around it's so easy to be sedentary mm -hmm. but my advocacy is that you know it's the very time that we have to be healthy that we have to be active because you know it boosts the immune system and having a great immune system is really you know the biggest defense that you can have against the virus so it's really point. the very time right Right. that we have to be healthy so yeah as mentioned um even though actually i'm living in a condo unit that is very small it's like studio type so the mm -hmm. space is really it's really challenging like i just have a yoga mat and then i lay it there and then i do burpees and everything so right. i still try to to be active because yeah again you can do so much at home still even though your space is very is very limited right. if there's a will there's a way so, yeah, yeah and you know in some of your videos on your youtube channel and which i'll put in the description of the video so Thank people you. can check that out um because you got some really awesome stuff but i happen to actually notice your some of the when you're filming you can actually see the background of your condo <laughs> and stuff like that and it's like really cool i was like oh wow that's kind of, even though it's a smaller space I like the design of it and how it's set up. It was kind of unique. You. <laughs> but um, so um, getting to your YouTube channel just a little bit, um, was the lockdown your motivation for doing the channel? Is that what really sparked it off for you? Is that like, you know, you know I'm going to find a way to get creative with my time? Or was there another motivation behind it? What, what sparked the whole thing for you to start creating content on YouTube? Exactly. It's really the lockdown that I think you know kind of pushed me well i've always wanted to have my own youtube channel ever since sure. i've always wanted to do vlogging because i'm really into public speaking and you know influencing people things like that sharing awesome. um you know sharing information to, to everyone but mm -hmm. Um, when things were still normal and, you know, I'm busy, I couldn't find what's really my niche or what would be the theme of my channel. Would it be into public speaking? Would it be about mental health? Would it be about fitness? There are just so many things sure. in my head. But, you know, this lockdown got me like so much time to reflect and then you know, I, I just noticed, I just felt so many things. And again, as mentioned, one of the things that I really noticed is that it's really challenging to keep your fitness to be healthy when you're just at home especially for those people like me who just have limited space mm -hmm. so you know i started a youtube channel just to share and just to show to everyone that you can do so much you can still get fit even though you're just at home i have mm -hmm. like a video in my channel wherein i was using um home equipment like chairs broom and whatsoever 
and doing my exercises. Yeah, so that's that was one of my favorite videos that you did. That was one of that was a yeah, great video. I, I really had fun filming that, and you know, it forced you to become creative in your workouts also. So somehow it's fun. Like you know, you're just used to having dumbbells, barbells, but now you don't have a choice because mm -hmm. you don't have gym, you don't have those equipment. So I just want to share to people that guys there are so many ways you know you just have to be creative you just you just have to 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 get up from that couch and you know mm -hmm. start to move we can we can still work out there are so many ways and also now you know fortunately i have friends who are like-minded who also want to work out so mm -hmm. what we do is every day we use zoom to do group workouts so it's That's like awesome. we're still together yeah and yeah, we, we have sets of workouts, then then we just do simple movements. You know, it doesn't have to be strenuous. It doesn't have to be so complicated. As mm -hmm. long as you do you do exercise regularly, that's fine. So yeah, to answer the question, really the lockdown is the trigger to yeah. start the YouTube channel. And I do, but, well, mm -hmm. I was going to say, you brought up a really good point about, you know, being able to still connect with people, like-minded people that are interested yeah. in the same things and being able to do that through technology, getting creative um just finding other ways to step outside of your comfort zone i think this is for some people to you know step outside of their comfort zone even though you think being at home is your comfort zone but it, it makes yeah. you have to get creative when it comes to doing different things or trying to um get over that boredom that you might be dealing with um but i want to ask you when you did you have any hesitations or anxieties or setbacks about or even any thoughts about like oh should i even start this channel what if people don't watch or what if people don't like me or you know did you have any of those thoughts or anything that go through your mind because and the reason why i bring that up is because part of the reason why i do this podcast is one i want to build connections with people i want to um give inf information to people i want to have conversations and you know just um kind of bring people together in a sense um but i also want to hopefully maybe inspire other people because like you i've always wanted to do a youtube channel you know it's mm -hmm. something i've thought about for quite some time and i said you know what one day i just broke down and said i'm gonna do it <laughs> so yeah. did you have any obstacles that you had to overcome and would you how'd you get over those or did what was that like for you yeah actually i had i would say doubt not really anxiety but more of doubt and intimidation at first sure. like would i really start a channel because i know that especially in the philippines the vloggers and the channels that actually make it to the top are those that provide entertainment you know not right. really more of the informative type right but i know that yeah i know that i'm not that kind of vlogger what i want is you know to share info motivation and inspiration but i think and i really accept not all people are really into that so i was i was asking myself so who would watch my channel right. but you know i i can't change myself this is me and i know my purpose i know i have a good intention and so i just i just pushed through it like i know i i know that you know i i said to myself as long as there's at least one person that's gonna watch my video and sure. that person is gonna be happy is gonna be impacted in a good way with the contents that i post then i'm gonna push through with this vlog thing so until now yeah I, I'm, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed with you know like you you reached out to me and then you said you know i really like your contents and also for me it just takes one person to tell you that you're you're doing great and that right. you're you're actually you know impacting some lives in a positive way so mm -hmm. as long as yeah there are even just you know few people who believe in me that that i do right. post a uh, good contents i'm gonna continue and so, i agree i agree and i think if you i think of a thing that you brought up there is like you you like you said you can only be yourself so i think regardless yeah. at the end of the day if you're just genuine just doing what you want to do being yourself you can't go wrong and even and if let's just say hypothetically nobody watches you're gonna yeah. you're, there's a lot of still benefits that you gain from it. you can work on your public speaking skills you yeah. can become exactly. more personal you open your horizon because sometimes you'll research different topics it forces you to read and research mm -hmm. things and so exactly. there's a lot of great benefits to it so yeah. I, i'm glad to hear you uh say that mm -hmm. um now you mentioned with the in the philippines some of the entertainment stuff is you know a little bit more popular and that's true in america as well you know i yeah. do a podcast and sometimes podcasts when you're talking about real issues it's easy to get lost sometimes yeah. like just 
I don't know if I want to say brain melting, <laughs> but you know, you just find just the, something to pass the time. You watch that little clickbait video, mm-hmm. stuff like that to pass mm-hmm. the time. But you know, I like you, I say, I want to stay true to myself. I want to inspire others. I want to have real conversations about, and mm-hmm. I think if you can do that, people will catch on. It may be a slower process. It may yeah. take a little time. Um, but you do have some really cool videos on there. Like, um, you have a mukbang video, like where you're eating. Yeah. I love food. So I, you know, those, yeah. those videos were really fun. So tell me a little bit about the mukbang videos. Is that part of what you kind of maybe did to kind of like get a little bit of attention on the, um, entertainment side or where did that come from? Is it, or was it, cause I noticed that you like to sit there, you talk with, you take questions and kind of talk with the chat. Is it just a more personal way for you to connect? Well, how did that come about? Yeah, actually, you know, the food stuff and the mukbang is not really part of the initial plan. <laughs> the right. initial plan is just really, it's really more more on health and fitness. And then I also do podcasts, mostly about mental health or self-help topics. So that's really that's my awesome. niche. But I'm really a foodie. Like, Me as too. much as I love to work <laughs> out, that's, <laughs> that's how I also love to eat. Like, I eat a lot. So... You know, I've been watching different mukbang videos before, so somehow I got inspired. But I want to give my own twist to it. Like mm-hmm. I don't just eat and share, you know, how I how I eat with everyone. Right, Basically, sure. they're watching how I eat. Um, as you can see in the mukbangs that I've already published, I'm also talking. I'm picking a certain mm-hmm. topic, and then I'll talk about that. And I know that many people don't like mukbangs like that because they're watching a mukbang to watch how you eat how you you know how that's the food looks like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and they're not really interested with you talking but again going back to to my niche i really want to stay true to myself and i want to add my own twist in whatever theme of videos that i'm right. doing and so i stick to it i'll do mukbangs but in every mukbang that i'll do i'll insert a topic to be discussed and i'm and i'll make sure that you know people would have some key takeaways from that topic not right. only you know they got entertained with the food that i'm eating but also you know something for the mind well i was certainly entertained by them i thought they were great and you know <laughs> just for the ladies out there i mean you know it's not necessarily my forte but i will say this particular you were talking about um, a little bit about your past relationships with an ex on there and what's your thoughts on that. And I actually got to commend you on that because, you know, you were like, you know, he, I'm happy for him. He's doing his own thing. I, I seen him on social media. It yeah. looks like he's doing well and I'm happy for him. A lot of women don't necessarily always have that take. So that, you know, some women are like, Oh, screw him. You're like, Oh no. Yeah. So, you know, it was nice, but you know, you kind of talk about some interesting stuff to add that little entertainment aspect. But I think it's good that you, the main thing that I took away is you still remain true to yourself. You know, you said, I'm not yeah. going to just go off on this. Like I'm not going to do the mukbang thing just because people want to see me eat or anything Mm -hmm. you still remain true to yourself say i'm gonna talk to my you know my chat and people that want to ask questions so i think that's great and another video i like that you did is you had this video of doing 100 burpees for 30 days yeah that was great and you got some great results from that you shared your progress um which was really neat um and you also talked about setting realistic expectations like you said i didn't wasn't able to do them every single day but i made the decision to do it you know three to four times you know a week Mm -hmm. And you documented that and you even said, you know, you were kind of struggling in the beginning with trying to like get under 10 minutes and doing a certain amount yeah. under 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And you kind of explained how, you know, you progressed and was able to meet your goals with that. But um, you used a phrase that I really liked in that video. And you said, it's not necessarily about speed or intensity, but about consistency. And yes. I applied that same thing to my podcast, you know, like sometimes there's days on the podcast where I'm like, man, do I really have to do a video today? But I say, I'm going to get through it. I'm going to yeah. do my episode and I'm going to push through. Um, and it may not be the most intense uh, episode, but I think that consistency showing up every week to do an episode, I think is really important. Um, it, so I feel like that phrase can be applied through um, a lot of different aspects of life. You know, it may not always yeah. be the most intense or, or the quickest, but it, consistency is key um would you agree on that and like what how um how do you you apply that is that something you apply through your daily life and stuff going forward 
Yes, definitely in everything that I do. For me, it's really, you know, consistency. I feel like, for example, if if you have a dream in life, you don't have to be pressured when it comes to schedule like, oh, I have to achieve it by this time. Mm-hmm. It's really more of, for example, in vlogging. Of course, all of us want to get seen. All of us want to have you know, great amount of subscribers. Sure. All of us want to be monetized. But, you know, it's it, we have different pace in, in whatever we do. As long as you're consistent, actually, and as long as you're enjoying the process, for me, that is already success in it. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, in, in vlogging, I make sure that I post once a week. That is really my commitment in terms of consistency. And, yeah, I'm enjoying the process. Like, uh, I mean, at first I was thinking, oh, hopefully I get monetized um, anytime right. soon, something like that. But, you know, as I went along, I just enjoyed it. And, you know, seeing people who are really, um, who really appreciate what you do and, you know, they commend you for, for also being consistent with the right. themes of your post, like sticking to your niche, like what you really believe in, what, what is your advocacy, something like that. So for me, yeah, consistency is really the key in everything that you do. It really plays an important important role whether you know it's in your career or in your personal life because right. you know um for me life is not a sprint it's it's a marathon Same. so i'm i'm just you know from a runner's perspective i'm just trying <laughs> to apply it also in life right it, it's a marathon it's it's gonna be a long way but at the end of the day there will always be a finish line and it doesn't matter how fast how slow you went through the whole process as long as you're able to arrive to that destination then that is already a success i agree with you a thousand percent i think that's awesome and you know it gives people like when you do that consistency they know they can count on you to come mm-hmm. and enjoy your content and like you said yeah. even if you don't have the largest audience or you're not monetized you know <laughs> It's the learning process can be very yeah. fun. I've learned a lot. I've met some amazing people, people like yeah. yourself. Yeah. I've also Thank kind you. of um, had the opportunity, you know, we had talked about um, working together a little bit on the thumbnail. You're like, yeah, you know, I'll help you with the thumbnail because that's something yeah. I struggle with. So it's like great <laughs> to be able to meet people and, you know, work, you know, and have those connections. And, and so I think that consistency does play a huge part. Um, now, getting to your fitness a little bit, is there any like because you know I like you mentioned marathon I know you like running marathons and your Instagram is full of just different events yeah. you've attended and um, places you've traveled you're you know there's a few pictures of you like kayaking on a boat mm-hmm. and just some really fun stuff it looks it, it looks great in the Philippines I'm assuming most of those photos are, are where they're from are just absolutely gorgeous like you know I just I've always wanted to go to the Philippines but I've never <laughs> had the opportunity um, but is there anyone in particular who inspired your uh, fitness journey or is it something that you kind of developed or you had a mindset like, you know what, I want to get into fitness or where did that come from to decide, you know, I want to take this seriously and really apply myself in health and fitness and stuff like that. Where did that come from? To be honest, the person who inspired me, it's just really myself. Like I wanted to become, you know, the better version of myself. That's awesome. um, just to share just to share a bit of a background, you know, way back, I think, you know, tw- I just started 2018. So before that, I'm really one of the least athletic person you'll ever meet in your life. But mm-hmm. come 2017, you know, I think I had lots of personal struggles, stress in life, stress at work, stress in everything, basically. And I needed an outlet. And then I just feel somehow physically weak um maybe because you know if you're if you're struggling emotionally mentally it it affects you know every aspect of your being it certainly does yeah right so so i i just felt like i i want to be stronger and i saw running i i really can't recall why it's the first sport that i tried but my 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 thinking is that it's like literally running away from your problems in life. That's how I feel whenever I'm running. So it's, it's like, like an you're, escape. You know, 
Yeah, exactly. Like an escape. And then I tried it. So I just started, you know, finishing one kilometer for me was already like gasping for air. That's how I started. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I was really literally catching my breath. But then right. I enjoyed the process because for me, it's not even about competition. I feel like I'm really, you know, in my own world when I'm running. I feel like I'm strong. I feel like I forget about everything. So yeah, it it gradually progressed. I then signed up for my first ever five kilometer run. And wow. um, I really felt so good after that, that, oh, I was able to finish it. Then the progress was gradual. I transitioned to 10 kilometers, eventually 16 kilometers. And then 2018, I finished my first half marathon, which is 21 kilometers. Mm. And then, yeah, fortunately, you this go, year. Girl. <laughs> you, you go, girl. <laughs> Thanks. And yeah, fortunately, this year, something that I'm really thankful for that I was able to do before the lockdown. So Feb 2020, I finished my first ever 42 kilometer run marathon mm -hmm. so that makes me an official marathoner and that's really one of my life's on um, bucket list so basically that's just how it started it's really with running and running made me more exposed in other sports as well like swimming because you know if you're a marathoner you're gonna think okay what's next maybe i can try triathlon so i tried swimming mm -hmm. i really wasn't able to swim before like i have aquaphobia you know that fear of deep water so i really don't swim but i decided yeah i decided to conquer it because of my dream to become a triathlete so yeah last year i was able to finish my first ever aquathlon event it's swim run because mm -hmm. i don't have a bike yet because i i haven't purchased anything yet so yeah um you know things like that and then eventually um leading to different sports like i do yoga sometimes you know for flexibility and sure. mobility boxing crossfit that's, boxing? that's you could probably I kick really... my ass then you could probably beat me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but just you know for cross training i would say running is really the core sport but it opened doors to different sports i would say so yeah i think variety is the key that's also what i advise to people that's awesome and it's good to hear that you kind of also it led you to overcome some fears like your aquaphobia you know mm -hmm. that like that's kind of awesome you know that's something that i probably wouldn't have thought about when it comes to sports or maybe having a specific fear um so that i that that's pretty neat you know because i have probably if i had to pick one i tried to think of a sport i'm like hmm, what would i kind of be afraid of that that could be a sport and i think for me i'm not really afraid but i don't like heights i'm not one for heights now i do mm -hmm. it i love roller coasters heights don't really bother me that much but maybe like rock climbing or something like yeah. that would be a great way to kind of really stop. push past mm -hmm. that fear you know so it's yeah. interesting see and that's part of the reason why i like doing the podcast it kind of gets your brain going it makes you think a little bit you know yeah so um what kind of advice could you give for someone that's wanting to start their fitness journey, you know, um, you've got a lot of stuff about your personal journey and, you know, starting your journey and what got you into it. Is there anything that you would offer to somebody that's just getting started? Yeah. You know, one thing that I really tell people who want to start their fitness journey, but they're struggling, it's simply just start doing it. You know, whatever it's that, yeah, you, you really just have to kick it off. Whether it's a very light workout that's just 10 to 15 minutes, it's still a workout. Mm -hmm. It's still a progress. You're still, you know, beating those people who just choose to stay on their bed for 24 hours, right? You, you, yeah, you still chose to get up, right? Because, you know, sometimes, and I also felt this when I was starting, you have like this intimidation with other athletic people. Like mm -hmm. you want to advance uh, um, right away because you feel so pressured but you know fitness is for everyone and that's why we have different sports we have different types of you know fitness activities and just find what works for you in that's my awesome. case run yeah running is really like my core sport because that's where i found myself i mm -hmm. would say that really gives me purpose in life and that opened so many doors for me in terms of meeting people in terms of you know exploring other sports as well but for but running is not for everyone so i really mm. i'm not really that type of runner who encourages everyone you know you have to try running because i know it's not for everyone right so my advice is find what works for you and you can only do it by trying different things mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to try you know we're not in a competition you're not joining a race so right. you just have to try like if you want to 
see if boxing is for you, then go for a boxing class. If it's not, then probably try yoga, then try cycling or whatever, you try swimming. That's what I like about fitness, you know, it's it's very limitless. Um, once you've already mastered something, you can't just stop because first, there will always be someone better than you. Sure. And second, yeah, if you've already mastered, let's say swimming, you're the greatest swimmer in the world, then it's time to transition to other sports like running or boxing. So yeah, it's a very limitless world and the journey is endless. So that's, so, you know, what I would advise to people who want to start right. their kick, who want to start their fitness journey, just and, start. And, and I agree. Mm -hmm. And if I could make a suggestion, and because I know some people may be facing a situation where they can't get to the gym because of the, the lockdowns or their gym, local gyms may be closed. I'm telling you guys, go to Yana's video of the <laughs> home workout. She has um, a bunch of household items you can use. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it's I mean, she's got like brooms, water bottles, all that <laughs> yeah. type of stuff. And, you know, it it's doesn't seem like you're like, oh, what am I going to do with water bottles? But you really show people you can kind of use them as weights and kind of just do some like basic punching <laughs> maneuvers. And like, yes. I think that's a great place to start. And, you know, the best part about it is if you're feeling that pressure or like, oh, what will other people think about me at the gym? If you're facing that, you can do it right at home just watching your video yeah. with no pressure around and just, yeah. just kind of just go with it and just see how you feel about it. And I know one of the things that you said that, you know, exercise is really important about getting those endorphins going and stuff yeah. like that. And so what do you, is that, would you say that's like the most important part about working out? Like kind of go into that a little bit. Yeah, for me right now, yes, you know, like in this situation that we're in, it's a very trying time. And as much as physical health is important, mental health is also too, right? You know, because, yeah, right now, I would say anxiety, depression, stress, they're kind of common because of, of, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and mm -hmm. it's not it's not really, you know, it's not an easy time to be in. And so you also have to take care of your mental health as much as you take care of your physical health. And I really, you know, I really suggest to people to exercise, not just, you know, to keep fit, to, to lose weight or something like that. You said it, it's really on, on the endorphins. So endorphins are these happy hormones that are, you know, being released whenever you finish a certain exercise because you feel so pumped up, you know, you're so high and you feel fulfilled because you just finished a workout, whether that's light, whether that's strenuous, it's still a workout. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I'm really a I would say a fan of endorphins because that really saves me every time. Like, you know, when I'm sad, when I'm stressed at work right. or anything, I just work out. And then these happy hormones are already being released. <laughs> and then, okay, I'm happy. I have a good mood, something like that. Right. So I would say running is really one of the top sports that give me endorphins. Maybe because, you know, it's very um, fast paced. So your heart is beating. You're so pumped up. Right. And it's so easy for these happy hormones to be released. But yeah, again, do what works for you. Whatever workout is that, you're going to have this happy hormones that would, that would really improve your mood. I really assure you that <laughs> sure and so let me ask so a part of your fitness journey do you have like a um a plan on where you may see it taking you do you have like a long-term goal attached to it or is it something that you're just kind of just flowing with and just letting the course take itself and kind of just develop into its own thing or do you have like a, a certain goal in mind with, with, with like your youtube video do you see what's the end goal for you what exactly do you think <laughs> I would say one of the goals, not really the main goal, but one of the goals is really to get into triathlon because, you know, running, swimming, that is really where my heart is. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on the sports. But again, I am a fan of variety and exploration. So right. I do things on the side. For example, CrossFit. Um, it's something that I really never expected I would like because I really hate weightlifting before. But, you know, because of this lockdown, I purchased my own dumbbells and then I have friends who are into CrossFit and now we're doing CrossFit at home and I really, really enjoy it. Right now, you know, almost every day I'm lifting weights and dumbbells. That's how I enjoy it. So I really cannot say, you know, that, you know, you you're not, you should not be closing doors to anything because, you know, life is full of surprises. So I would say I'm really just, you know, going with the flow, like the dream 
to join triathlon is always there but i'm not closing my doors to any kind of sports for example this youtube channel it's something that just popped up this right. quarantine i really didn't i didn't have an idea that you know I, I would really be able to create one so i would say the end goal um not really specific but um just to influence people in terms of you know um getting into fitness in terms of knowing the benefits of fitness um, exercising daily maybe that's the end goal and um, it doesn't matter how i would be able to do it whether you know to become the best out athlete out there or mm -hmm. to through youtube videos or whatever means but that is really the end goal if i would be able to you know influence people to have an impact on their lives in a good way um in terms of health and fitness and maybe in other things as well i would say that is my end goal that's awesome and so just a little bit outside of health and fitness do you have any other particular hobbies that really uh, you know that you're interested in that you know maybe if you're having one of those days where you're like you know i just can't find the motivation or i'm gonna take a breather day what do you do to f occupy that time i'm really into writing ever That's since awesome. i was a kid so yeah um more of content writing. Um, I do it on the side. So there's this uh, website in the Philippines. It's called Pinoy Fitness. It's really for sports, um, running marathon, and all of those stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and then I just applied, and then I got in as a writer. So sometimes I post contents on there. Uh, that that started i think 2018 so yeah it's also one of my ways to influence people you know when they read your articles they they they, they kind of see oh okay so this is how you know how running can impact my life in a good right. way or fitness or whatsoever so yeah writing is really also one of my passions and then um eating i, really I love, love to, to eat, eat too i love to eat too <laughs> whether i'm stressed whether i'm happy <laughs> i love to eat it, yes it has many different cures well you know yeah. maybe i don't want to make goals for you or anything but i was mm. thinking an end goal could possibly could you ever see yourself maybe writing a book one day or something like that to inspire others? that would be a great idea right yeah, I, you know, that's really one of my, I would say, life goals that, you know, sometimes I feel like it's impossible, of course, like writing a book. No, how, you can but, do it. You can do it. But I hope so. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. I think that would be awesome. Well, I want to make sure I get that link for that website so I can put that in the oh, description. So yeah. um, after the show, you know, make sure you're, that I get with you and send that link through so I can put it in the description. Cause one, I would like to read it and I'm sure some other people would like to check it out as well. Um, yeah. So that way, cause I, I like to read um, whether, regardless of what it is, if I'm reading, I mm -hmm. feel like that's the best way to kind of absorb information. Um, mm. So I think that's great. Um, it, speaking of food though, is there any great Filipino dishes I should try? Is there something that you can recommend? Because I like to eat and I love I love ethnic food. So if there's something that I should try, you got to let me in on the secret here. <laughs> yeah, well, there are so many great Filipino food. And, you know, because we're colonized by Spaniards um, way back, I don't know, 1800s, 1700s. Most of the food are also kind of Western or Spanish as well. But something that is very unique to the Philippines, I would say, not sure if you've already heard of sinigang. I haven't. Um, okay, how would I explain it? It's it. So it has meat. And okay. then there are vegetables and then there's soup. But what makes it unique is it's sour. Huh. There's this sour taste. Does it have like so, vinegar or something in it? Or what makes it sour? Because I like sour foods. I love vinegary mm. stuff. I love kind of like I love like pickles and things like that, you know. So I just like yeah. that sour tasting stuff. Yeah, so I'm kind of I, I, it sounds like something <laughs> I would like to try. <laughs> yeah. So there's this fruit called kamias. I'm not uh -huh. sure if in other countries there is, but it gives that natural sour taste to the sinigang. It's a fruit that is very sour you know, um, naturally. Uh -huh. So if you put that in something and then you crushed it, the natural flavor, you know, that, that sourness really is really getting absorbed in the food. So that sounds I really think interesting. Yeah. I want to try it. I got my <laughs> taste buds going, but you know, it's kind of interesting. And, uh, cause I, I didn't know this prior to speaking with you right now. It's uh, like, 
Um, it's or we were recording this episode a little bit. It's a pre-recorded episode, but it's eight a.m. here. But it's like you're on like a twelve-hour difference, like eight yeah. p.m. for you, right? Wow, that I mean, well, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time out to do the no show. Um, that's just awesome to me. But I had no idea that we were on such a huge time difference there. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Well, I'm really excited to have spoken to you. Um, you. I'm definitely want to make sure that I get with you after the show to make sure I get that that link to the the page where we can see your writing. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely put your Instagram um, uh, link into the video, your YouTube channel. And I'm going to specifically link that one video of all <laughs> the things that you can do from home. Um, mm-hmm. That was a great video. I think that's a, like a great place for people that want to start to really – get involved in health and fitness without any pressure they can watch that video and i think that'll be a great place for them to start so Mm -hmm. i'll definitely put that in the description is there anything else that you wanted to make sure people knew or yeah so first um thank you really kevin you know for having me here it's really a pleasure you know talking to you and sharing to people um all this fitness stuff so yeah maybe um i'll just like to promote to everyone my youtube channel just search for yanatan um i have contents right there which are health related you know health and fitness i also do again mukbangs and food review which are and great. i also have yeah <laughs> I also have this this podcast, you know, this video series, which I call Yana Asks. So just like what you're doing, I also feature a guest and then we're going to talk about mental health or a self-help topic, um, anything under the sun. So those are the contents that I have so far. And yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to visit my channel and also um, keep supporting um, Kevin's contents. I'm really, really <laughs> a fan of podcasts Aww, well, like this. You. and. Yeah, info sharing. I feel like there should be more vloggers who should be doing this. So I really support. Well, I appreciate that. And you are you're an awesome guest. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. on the show. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. And thank I will you. be in touch afterwards. And uh, yeah. so you enjoy the rest of your day and or your evening. I guess my day is just starting <laughs> and yours will be ending yeah. soon. But you take care of yourself, Yana. And thank you so you much too, for being Kevin. on. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that was the uh, Yana Tan. Um, what an awesome chick. Very nice and uh, fun to talk to. Hopefully you got some great information from her. Um, you know, the Philippines is a place I've always wanted to travel to. I'm telling you, her Instagram page has got some really beautiful pictures of what the Philippines kind of looks like. I've seen it on TV a few times, um, especially with that, what is that? I believe the 90 Day Fiance with uh, Big Ed and that girl Rose. You see some pictures, and some of them aren't so appealing, and maybe that's for TV effect. But to see some of the photos of the places she's, uh, you know, uh, getting involved with health and fitness and doing some run of her, her running and getting into the water, whether it's kayak and she's got some really great stuff and, uh, she was an awesome guest to have. Um, but, uh, that's going to be it for today's show. Um, this is a pre-recorded episode, so I will make sure it's uploaded on Monday by 7 PM. So everybody can check this episode out with Yana. Um, Other than that, I'll see you guys the following Monday for that episode. We may have a guest on. I'm working out some details um, with a financial advisor named John. He's a real nice guy. Um, So I think everybody will benefit from hearing from John uh, as a financial advisor. Can tell you some tips and tricks to um, really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of... um, utilize your money during these hard times if you're struggling with money um, he's going to be able to probably give us some tips on that type of stuff what you should do to maximize your dollar Um, so we'll check that out Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight I hope you all take care and I'll see you guys next week